hurting me. Okay, guys, back in Romans chapter 1, we were talking about the fact that there are people out there. God tells us, is he with me? You with me? Yes, sir. God tells us that there are people out there who don't want him to be a part of their lives. They suppress the truth and unrighteousness. He told us that in the first part of this, the early part of this verse as we were looking at, middle of the chapter. They also exchange the truth about God for a lie. They choose to believe a lie and they don't see fit to acknowledge him. He said that. We've already talked about those verses. And therefore, they start committing all kinds of sin and justifying it and rationalizing it and saying it's just no big deal. They think it's okay for them to do these things. And he mentioned homosexuality already, but then he said, it's not all. He said they were what? Do you remember this? Right. Yeah, they were filled. filled with all manner of unrighteousness and evil. E evil. Wait a evil. evil. Covetousness. Malice. 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 Envy. They were full of envy. Murder. Murder. Maliciousness. Yeah. So we just started that list here in verse 29. But God's not through that list. I just didn't want to get back to it until we had more time. And we didn't have enough time the other day because of chapel. Or I thought we were in chapel. Anyway, there are gossips. The next verse goes right on with this list. And the first thing in the list has a lot to do with gossip. Um, when you say bad things about people, especially untrue things about people, designed to hurt them somehow, like maybe cause them to lose a job or cause somebody to not like them or something, you, you say bad things about people. You know what that's called? You can be sued for this in America. You know, if, if people can sue you for, it starts with SL. Slandering? That's it. Slandering? Yeah, so there's slanderers. There's, there's slander other people. And then this phrase goes together. Honor? No. It's, it's something bad. It's a sin. Uh, yeah, haters of God. They hate God. Obviously, they don't want God in their lives. He's always said that several times. They hate God. This is a word that a lot of people have trouble with today. It may be a new word for you, but it's kind of a synonym for pride. No, sir. It starts with an I N. Huh? No. It starts with an I N S. No, not insult. It may be a new word. I N S O. N O I N S O L. Insolent. Have you heard the word insolent before? You have heard it? Yeah, that's it. Insolent. They hate God. They're insolent. Here's another word that has to do with pride. We usually think of this word as people who, it's the way they carry themselves. They look this. They, they're kind of looking down on other people. Haughty. Very good. Haughty. This is another word that has to do with pride. Proud people do a lot of this. What, what do proud people tend to do? Well, that's a good guess, but that's not it. Um, if if you're proud, what do you what do you like to talk about? Yourself and and what you've done, right? What do you call that when you're talking about yourself and what you've done all the time? <laughs> that's it. Madison got it. boasting. They're insolent, haughty, and boasters. You could have come up with the word brag there also, you know, bragging on yourself, but, but that's not in this verse. Insolent, haughty, boastful. And here's another phrase. Uh, guess what that word is? Evil. No? Evil. Evil. And, and this means they come up with new ways of doing. Inventors. Yeah, inventors of evil. Very good. Inventors of evil. Well, it's very bad, but very good guess. All right, and then this one all goes together too. No, it's not people. This one is aimed at young people who are still living at home. So guess what that word is? That's close. Guess what that word is? They're living at home. Parents. Yeah, parents. But it's not dishonor. It's, it's another word. Disrespectful is a good guess, too. D-I-S is the way it starts, but it's not dishonor. And it's not disrespectful. What? No. If you're... If your parents tell you something to do and you don't do it, yeah, what's the word? Dis Change. Disobedient. Disobedient to parents. Yeah, that's all right. You got it. Yeah, that's good. And then the verse 31 talks about four other things with just one word each. This describes them. It's just a one word description of what they're like. And the first one means they're not wise at all. Oh, 
they're foolish. Yeah. And this means it could mean they're not, they can't be trusted themselves, but also could mean they don't, they don't have any confidence in God at all because they, they don't have any confidence in him. So they're what? No, this, the, the beginning of this word is the most, one of the most important words in the Bible. The beginning of that word, the, the first part of it is what we have to have in order to have salvation, faith. Only they don't have it, so they're faithless. Uh -huh. And this means people who are, uh, if somebody else is hurting, you know, God wants us to, to hurt with them. You know what I mean? He wants us to have empathy for people who are hurting. But these are people who don't have that. You know, if somebody's hurting, it doesn't affect them. They don't, it doesn't bother them. They're not, they're not, they're what? H E. Um, no. Think of, think about it. Think about somebody. You know, think about, that's, that's a good guess. Think about somebody who just seems to be, they don't care that other people are hurting. It doesn't bother them. No. Um, H E A. Heartless. That's it. Heartless. And this is a step further. These are people who not only don't care, but they're willing to hurt people to get their way. Uh, these we think of cruel dictators as being this. Uh, what? Ruthless. That's it. Ruthless. Yeah. So they're slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents. Foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Big long list of sins that uh, that people engage in and excuse themselves because as far as they're concerned, there's no God to tell them what to do. They'll do what they want to do and it works for them, they think. It doesn't in the long run. So it's hard to memorize a list of words like that. So let's just kind of do the whole thing again. Only this time we'll start with the, I'll go ahead and read it one more time. We'll start with this word, slanderers, haters of God, insolent haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Can you do it? Very good, guys. Awesome. Okay, a lot of words, yeah. Anything you want to add or say before I pray? Okay, Father, thank you for these kids. Thank you for the way they take your word seriously and they so, are so eager to try to learn your word and they memorize these things so well. I pray you bless them for that. And thank you for reminding us in your word today that those people who choose not to acknowledge you, those people who choose to suppress the truth in their unrighteousness and ungodliness, those people who exchange the truth about you for a lie, Lord, you've revealed to us here that this is how they behave. They start doing things that are wicked and awful and amazingly bad, and yet they think they're doing fine. And so, Lord, I pray you'd wake people up, help them to realize what a horrible situation they're in. They're headed for destruction. And I pray, Lord, that you would wake them up so that they might come to repentance and faith in Jesus, that they might realize you love them and they might learn to love you and trust you and walk with you and give up this awful sin. Lord, we pray you'd raise up godly men and women across our country to stand firm in your truth on your word and to be willing to be called names and ridiculed, but to stand firm. And Lord, I don't know how many kids there are in this school who've never ever yet really given their lives to you. They've never yet trusted Jesus. But I pray that maybe soon uh, those who've not trusted Jesus will make the decision to follow you. And Lord, if you can use me in their lives, you know, I'd be happy to help them think that through. Lord, it may be that there's some kids here in this school who've gone through the motions, but they're really not living for you. They're living for themselves and maybe in sin. And, and so they're not really your kids yet. So I pray that you wake them up and real, help them realize they need to trust Jesus, really trust Jesus. Help us, Lord, to walk with you and help us to recognize this ugly sin when we're tempted to do it and when we see other people doing it as well and realize that the outcome is very, very bad. Lord, I pray you'd help these kids now as we focus on math. I know some of them have been not making very good grades and some of them need to learn how to study. 
need to learn how to memorize these things, need to learn how to work these problems. And I pray you'd help them realize the importance of disciplining themselves and watching the videos and going over the study guides carefully and making sure they really know what they're doing, and really know how to do these things. Please, Lord, don't let them talk themselves out of it. I know there's some kids, Lord, I've known them who will, who just think they're bad at math, so why bother and why try? And Lord, you know that's a bad attitude. And I know it's a bad attitude, so I pray you'd help them to repent of that and uh, make their best effort possible to do the what, as best they can to make better grades. Thank you for the ones who are working hard. I pray you'd bless them for their work and efforts and help them not to be proud or haughty, but help them to realize that you are the one enabling them to do this and to do it working hard, but do it for your glory with your strength and your help. So thank you for being in charge of us. Thank you for this opportunity. We want to bring glory to you in everything we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm not amen. All right, I think a lot of what we're going to be doing in these next few lessons are going to be uh, is going to be kind of review for you. I think a lot of you are going to know it. By the way, I'm going to go there. Saul, you're just turning some assignments while I go, and I'm just going to use this as an example. Let me remind you, I, I've been going getting a lot of assignments still where people just turn in a bunch of pages. And they're all out of order, and I don't want to have to have to go through and put all that in order. But like his, the earliest page he had was page 299, so that goes in the upper right-hand corner. Then it goes by odds. You know, the next page will be 300, so there's 301. 302, 303. See how that works? And it goes up from 299, 304. And he didn't have 305, I mean, uh, 5 and 6. That wasn't probably part of the lesson, but 307 is right there. So that's, that's just put them in the order. All that you got, put them in order from lowest to highest. So that's the way you got to do it. Make sure you do it right. Uh, I came real close the other day to deciding to start counting off, you know, taking away, not giving you full credit for your assignments if you didn't put them in the right order. But I haven't decided to do that yet. Okay. Um, I don't know why I brought this up here. I'll get it later. Distributed property. Let me talk about the distributed property a minute. Um, this is something you'll see a whole lot in your math courses to come. Uh, if you're going to take more math courses, of course. Uh, and, and it's going to show up again and again and again and again. So if you can learn it right now, it'll be valuable to you from, for many, many years, the distributed property. Let me say something else I probably ought to say more often. A lot of kids have this attitude. Look, I hate math. I don't need math. I got a calculator. I don't want to learn this stuff. Why bother? But I'm telling you guys, it's good for your brain. It makes your brain think systematically and logically. And so make yourself do it. And, and, and the state says you need to learn this stuff. And most most schools feel like, yeah, you need to know some math and basic math. And so this, you may say, well, I may not ever use it. Well, you might not. But your brain's going to need a lot of, and you'll probably use more than you think. I remember my wife. Uh, I mean, she just told me the story. I didn't know her then, but but when she went to high school, she had to take algebra, and she thought, "When on earth am I going to ever use this algebra?" And then a few years later, she was working for an insurance company, and she was having to put together algebraic equations and formulas and solve the equations. She thought, "Wow, I never thought I'd have to do this." I had another student one time. He was interested in roofing. He wasn't interested in math, but he had to take the math. And we, it was a more, uh, it was a, it was an algebra two course, I think, where we were teaching some trigonometry. And he said, "Wow," he said, "My dad's a roofer, and I've been helping him put roofing." And he said, "I didn't realize they used trigonometry to do that stuff." <laughs> so you know, you just have to learn it sooner or later. So it's much, much better for you to learn it now. Anyway, uh, distributed property. They're talking about formulas first. This is, happens to be the formula for the area of a rectangle length times width. You know that. If they give you the length and give you the width, you know how to find the area, right? If they say the length is 8 and the width is 4, you just plug those numbers back in. The 8 where the L is and the 4 where the W is, and you multiply them, you get 32, right? Everybody knows how to do that, don't you? Yeah, just plug in the numbers. If they tell you the L is 8, you put an 8 right there, and the W is 4, you put a 4 right there, and multiply them because they're written beside each other. So that's pretty basic. Now, they did that because they wanted you to think about perimeter. The perimeter, you know, there's another length down here and there's another width over here. So you could think of perimeter as length plus width plus length plus width, right? I do that a lot. 
I mean, I don't think about these formulas. I just add them all up. Just you know, length plus width plus length plus width. But they said you could write that as a formula since there are two lengths here. You could say that's 2L and there are two W's here. So you could say that's 2W and, add, and then add those together. But another thing you could do is say I could add this length and width right here and get this part of the rectangle and then, and then double it because there's another one down here and just multiply the whole thing, right? So there's three different ways you could think of that as a formula. And the main reason they're telling you that, it doesn't matter which way you use, you'll get the same answer. It doesn't really matter. But what they wanted you to notice was in this case, the length of this two, we call it distributed. It's distributed to the L and to the W. You see that? Two times L is right here. Two times W is right here. And that's called the distributed property. Uh, if you wanted to use all letters, you could say A times B plus C is, a, is the same thing as A times B plus A times C. See how that works? If there were three of them, it would still work. If you had B plus C plus D, it would be A times B plus A times C plus A times D. Yep. Doesn't matter how many you got out here. If they're all in parentheses, each one of them is going to be multiplied by that eight. That's called the distributive property. The distributive property. If it's numbers, if you had three times eight plus twelve, that's the same thing as three times eight plus three times twelve. That's distributed. Three times eight plus three times twelve. Three times eight is twenty-four. 3 times 12 is 36, and 24 plus 36 is 60. Now, you have been used to doing it the other way, which in this case would probably be easier. 8 plus 12 is 20, right? And 3 times 20 is 60. So in this case, it's easier just to do it the old-fashioned way. You with me? But sometimes it's easier to separate it out. For example, let's try this. Let's say I had 6 times uh, let me come up with something here. Uh, 75. Uh, it's not too hard. Let's just make it a little harder than that. Let's make it 57. All right, 6 times 57. Now, you can multiply 6 times 57. You know how to do that. 6 times 57. You can do it. But you could separate this thing and make it 50 plus 7. You see? Because that's 57. It's the same thing. And then you can distribute the 6. 6 times 50 is 300. 6 times 7 is 42. So 6 times 57 is 342. So that's probably easier for most of you. So sometimes it helps to break it out like this and use the distributive property. 6 times 50 and then 6 times 7. Yeah. Now you get the same answer if you did it this way. 6 times 7 is 42. 6 times 5 is 30. And 4 is 342. So it gets the same answer. But, you know, it works both ways, and you need to be able to do that. Distributed property. Okay. Oh, it works for subtraction, too. I didn't say that, but if it's B minus C, it's AB minus. AC. It's just a minus sign instead of a plus sign, but it's the same thing. Same exact thing. It's got a minus sign. Yeah, works with addition or subtraction. Yep. Yep. All right. Now, here's a couple of little problems. Uh, a is BH. It doesn't matter. That happens to be the formula for the uh, area of a parallelogram, but you don't have to remember that right now, anyway. It's just, it's good, a good thing to know. But, but what they want you right now is do it right now is evaluate it. B is 15, so you're going to plug a 15 in right here. H is 8, so you're going to plug an 8 in right here. And you get 15 times 8. Okay? Okay? And, and you might, you're right, it's 120, you can just multiply it uh, the old-fashioned way and get that. But you could say that's 8 times 10 plus 5. 8 times 10 is 80. 8 times 5 is 40, and that's 120. 
That might be easier for some of you. Anyway, that's right. Here's another one. This time they gave you the four. It looks like a area of a what? Do you remember that one? That, that's a triangle. A, B divided by two, half A, B. Only, you know, a, they used A, B instead of B, H. You're used to seeing B, H. But A is six. So I'm going to put a six where the A is. B is eight. So I'm going to put an eight where the B is. I'm going to divide it by two. Yeah. Now, guys, again, remember, you can say six times eight is 48. And eight, 48 divided by two is 24. Or you could have said, look at this. I'm going to divide, I'm going to cancel the two and the six. And that's three. Three times eight is 24. Or you could have canceled the two with the eight. Two goes to eight four times. Four times six is 24. It doesn't matter. You'll get the same answer. Whatever looks easy for you. You just plug the numbers in. That's called substitution. Substitute the 6 for the A. A is 6. Substitute the 8 for the B. B is 8. Then do the math. All right. All right. Um, Write an equation using the letters X, Y, and Z that illustrates the distributive property. So I'm going to write X times Y plus Z. Yeah. Equals. Now, how do I write the other? X, Y plus X, Z. Yeah. X, Y plus X, Z. You just distribute it. Show two ways to simplify this. All right. One way would be six times. 15, you see it? 20 minus 5 is 15. When we multiply it together, you get 90, I think. But you could say that's 6 times 20 minus 6 times 5. 6 times 20 is 120. 6 times 5 is 30. 120 minus 30 is 90. Get the same answer. Okay. All right. Um, we already did that perimeter thing a while ago. Two ways to simplify this is the same, same kind of thing. You can say that's 6 times 10 because 6 plus 4, I'm sorry, 2 times 10 because 6 plus 4 is 10. That's 20. Is that looks pretty easy. Or you could say 2 times 6 is 12, and 2 times 4 is 8, and 8 and 12 is 20. That's the distributive problem. Okay. Uh, repeating decimals. If you have one third, everybody, now listen, I, I've, some of you have been missing this on tests. Make sure you understand this. When you see a fraction, numerator, denominator, this is a divide, dividing symbol. You realize that? This is exactly the same as 1 divided by 3, or that's 1 divided by 3 also, 3 divided into the 1. Do you understand that? So when you see a fraction and you're supposed to change it to a decimal, you just divide. 1 divided by 3. Now watch what happens here. I get 3, three. 9, subtract. I'm going to put some zeros here. Bring down. Three goes to ten. Three, three times three. And you see what's you already see what's happening. Yeah, it's just gonna go on forever, right? It's never gonna stop. Just the same thing, on and on and on. So sometimes you'll see that. That's what they did here. But you know what you see more often? You remember this? Yeah. Yeah. A little bar over the three. Just the part that repeats over the three. Like here, if you want to put a bar over it, what would the bar go over? Yeah, just the six, not the one. What about this one? The one? One eight. Yeah, three one eight. You see the one eight is the part that starts repeating. So the bar doesn't go over the three, just over the part that repeats over and over and over. And that means it just goes on and on forever that way. Okay. Repeating decimals, they show up fairly often. All right. And also, it's going to divide 1 by 11. 1 11th, 11 divided into 1. It won't go into 10, but it goes into 109 times, right? 9 times 11 is 99. 
going. Yeah, except when you bring one the zero down, you got to put a zero here, and then you bring the second zero down. I'm sorry, girls. I need to wait on you. you sure, you okay? All right. So eleven goes to hundred again nine times. So you can see a pattern here. Nine times eleven is ninety-nine. But it's not the first one. The first zero you bring down, it still won't go. So you got a zero there. And the second zero, then it goes nine times. So what's this bar going to look like? Over the 90, yeah. But not the zero. Not, not, the, not that. Oh, no, 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 no. I said that wrong. My bad. It's zero nine. It starts with a zero. So zero nine, zero nine, zero nine. So that's the part that remains. I said it wrong first. I'm sorry. All right. You look to the part that starts to repeat. The three is not under the bar because it's not repeat. But the one and eight, they, they keep repeating. All right. Um, I don't think I told the other class this, but that's a word you probably ought to recognize. The six is called a repetend because that's the part that repeats. The 18 is the repetend. Because that's the part that repeats. So, where would the bar go here? Yep. Where would the bar go here? Yep. You clear to everybody? Not the 8 1, just the 6. Now, sometimes they ask you to round these things. Here's. Yeah. Yeah, what you need to do is put plenty of 6s there because it just goes on forever, right? Bar means. And then round it to the nearest thousands. That's this place. This is tenths. This is hundreds. This is thousands. And this six. Seven. Because that six tells you this goes up to a seven. You remember that? Yeah. This is the thousands place, the third place. And the next place tells you whether it goes up or down. If this had been a five, I mean a four, then that would have stayed a six. But it's a six, so it goes up to a seven. Okay. And this one, if you're going to write it out, is 3.818181. You don't have to go too far, but far enough to get past the thousandth place. Yeah, 5.382. This is the thousandth place, the one. And that next one tells you it's bigger than five, so you go up. Don't try to round it before you write them out like that. It'll, you'll get confused if you just look at that number right there. Write them all out. Then look at the thousandth place in this case. And then the next number. If it had asked you to round this to the nearest hundredth, it'd be 5.1. Sorry, guys. I thought I had that turned off. Sorry about that. I usually have it turned off in here, but I didn't get it turned off today. So maybe. That won't happen again. All right. Yeah, if you were rounding to the nearest hundredth, you'd be looking at the eight, and the one would tell you leave it at eight point three eight. All right. Um. Go ahead and do that one. Divide 1.7 by 12. So by 12 means the 12 is out here. 1.7 is divided by 12. And I'd go ahead and yeah, put the decimal up, put you some zeros out there. Just a bunch of them. 12 goes to 17. Won't go to the one. One time. Five. Five zero goes to 50. Four. Four times 12 is 48. Subtract. Bring down a zero. One again. Is that right? 1 times 12 is 12. Subtract. Bring down a 0. 12 goes into 80. You know how many times? 6. 6. 6 times 12 is 72. Subtract. Uh-oh. You see what's happening now, don't you? So the 6 is keep repeating again. And it just goes on and on and on. That's right. So to put a bar over would be 1416, and the bar just goes over the 6, not the 141, one, just the 6. 
Then if you're going to round it to four decimal places, that would mean one, two, three, four. This is either going to stay at six or it's going to go up to seven. What is it? Yeah, because that tells you to go up. That six tells this needs to go up to a seven. So 0 0.1417 round into four decimal places. Excellent. Decimals to fractions. All right. Let me ask you, if you had 0.43 and wanted to change that to a fraction, you know how to do it? Now, everybody better watch me there. If you need to do this, what? It's, this is 43 hundredths, right? That's tenths. That's hundredths. 43 hundredths. And you just write down what you're saying. 43 hundredths. That's the end. That changed that decimal to a fraction. If it had been 0.45, it would have been 45 hundredths. Except many times they will ask you to reduce this. Can you think of a number that goes into both 45 and 100? Five. Nine and, you know, times five goes into 100? 20. There it is. Now, guys, listen. On the test, are you listening to me? If you have one like this on the test, and they say reduce it, and you write it like this, I will give you some credit because that's true. It's just not finished. If you really want to get full credit, you need to go ahead and reduce it if they tell you to. So that's concerning con converting decimals to fractions. If it was 0. 0.7, it would be what? 7 over 10. 7 tenths. That's 7 tenths. 7 over 10. Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty easy. If you remember what decimals mean, you just write it over the 10 or the 100 or the 1,000. Converting fractions to decimals. Well, we've already been doing that. If you have 7 eighths, how do you change that to a decimal? You divide it. 8 won't go into 7. Eight goes to 70. No. Eight. Eight times eight, 64. This is a real test of your multiplication tables. And I know, I know a lot of you hate it, but you got to learn them. Six. Eight goes to 60. Four, four. No, five, six. Seven. That's seven. Seven times eight is what? Seven times eight. What's seven times eight? 56. 56, thanks. A lot of people want to say 54. How do you get 54? Yeah. Nine times six. Seven times four and zero, five, and you are done, right? So that's it. That's changing a fraction to a decimal. Just divide. Once again, I've been preaching ever since the first day of school. You must know your multiplication tables. And some of you refuse to learn them. because it's biting you still. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Some of you know it. I know it's good. Some of you learn them and forget them. You just have to relearn them. I know how that works. Too. Hmm. <laughs> All right. All right. Stay with me here. I'm sure that's cool memories. But can, look at this last one: converting percents to decimals. Now, guys, this turns out to be easy, but tricky. So watch me here. Yeah, yeah. If you have 37 percent. They'd be 0.37. Just move that decimal point two places to the left, right? That's It always works that way, two places to the left. You just got to be careful. For example, if I had 2%, what's that going to be? 0 0.02. 02. Yeah, you got you to gotta move it two places. So if there's not a zero there, you got to put it in there. Look at this. What if I had 2.3%? Oh, that would be 0.3%. That's it. Just keep moving it two places to the left. Uh, what if I had one fourth of a percent? <laughs> It'd be zero zero seven five. That's close. What's one fourth? How do you change change this to a decimal first? What what is this? Is a decimal? No, it's not four seven five. It's one fourth. One four five. five. Yeah, this is the same as point two five percent. Zero zero two. Yeah, you still move it two places to the left. So it looks weird to some of you, but you move it two places to the left every time to change percent. To, if there's already a decimal in it, move it two places to the left. If there's not a percent, what about this one? 157%. Oh, 1.57. 1. 1. 1. The decimal's right here, so you move it two places to the left. It's 1.57. Yeah. So that's all you need to know in this lesson, just about. I'll look and see what they got here. But you're doing great. Mm -hmm.
So they said, right, 0.125 is a fraction. That's that's not, this is tenths, that's hundreds, that's thousands. So they put over a thousand and they reduced it to one eighth. One fourth, one divided by four, 0.25. They just divided like we did a while ago. There they got a repeating decimal. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. So let's write these as a decimal real quickly. This is going to be. Good. It's, it's 23 hundredths is 23 hundredths. This one you're going to have to what? Divide. Divide. Four into seven. One time. One time. No, uh, three times six is 18. <laughs> it is seven. Seven times four is 28. Yep. Two. Five. Five. It's the answer to that one. 1.75. Look, this one might confuse you. Don't, don't do anything with the three, but don't get rid of it. You're going to need it at the end, but you got to change this to a decimal. So five goes into four. Eight. That's it, right? That's it. So this is the same as three point eight. Don't you can't drop the three, but you don't have to divide by three or anything. Just just leave it there. Yeah. And of course, we've done one of those. That turns out to be a repeating decimal. All right. Very good. So here's the deal. I got it marked in red. All you have to do to change a percent to a decimal is that you shift the decimal point two places to the left every time. If it's 5%, two places to the left, 0.05. 75%, two places to the left, 0.75. Yep. Are you going to write this as a fraction? Over 100, and then just reduce it. And then you, you, you know, you might notice that four goes to both of those. But let's just suppose you didn't. Let's suppose you say, well, they're both even. I know two goes into both those. You just don't quit because they're still both even, right? So two goes into both those, and now you're done. And this one, you don't have to worry about the 45. Just change that six to six tenths, which is three fifths. It's reduced, which is 45 and three fifths. You don't have to do anything with 45. Just don't lose it. Just change this to three fifths. Wow. 1,000, and you reduce it. Yeah, so I'm not going to worry about that. I know you can do it. And this you divide. We've done plenty of those now. This is what? No, yeah, but we're going to change it to decimal. Zero, five, zero, zero, eight. Zero, five, zero, eight. Zero, five, zero, five. I see it. Two places to the left. 1.5, one, five, two places to the left. That can be tricky. And this is the same as 6.5%, so it's 0 0.065, again. Yeah. Two places to the left. Good. Now, all they're going to teach you in this lesson is that when you divide, are you with me here? When you divide, there are three different ways you can write the answer. That's all they're asking you to learn in this lesson right here. So, divide 55 by 4. 4 goes into 55. All right. 1, 3. Now, they're all the same until you get to this point right here. Now you've got three different possibilities. When you first started dividing, what you probably did is put, well, that's a remainder of three. You remember doing that? Yeah. Now you got to keep going. But not too long ago, we did this. One, three, three. And you said, wait a minute. I can put that three over that four and write that as three fours. You remember that? And then you can also you just got, keep going. After yeah. But so there's the, there's the mixed number, 13 and three fours. And now you know that you can write a decimal there and keep going. One. Oh, not three. Five. Three. And now put a decimal here and a decimal here and a bunch of zeros and start bringing them down. Four goes to 30. 
<laughs> seven times, 28, subtract, two, bring down a zero, five, there it is, it's a decimal. Next number, remainder. So you can you can write down any one of those three. On the test, they'll probably tell you. Write it as a decimal, or write it as a fraction, or a mixed number, or write it as a remainder. Just do what they tell you. Okay. Cool. Girls, girls, girls. 93 horses are kept in four stables as equal as possible. You can't chop them up, okay? No, that's gross. How many horses are in each of the four stables? So what am I going to do? Divide by four. Yeah, 93 divided by four. One. One. No. Two. Two. Three. Three. Well, one left over. So, yeah. So you got 23 horses in each of the four stables, but you got one left over. So you'll have 23 and 23 and 23 and 24, one with 24. And you can make sure that adds up to 93, but it should, okay? Because there's one left over here 23, but there's one left over. Okay. All right. Um, right now, when you divide by a decimal, this is so cool. We're way ahead of the class right now, and that's a good thing. Yeah, but but a couple of lessons. But you get hurt on Thursday, remember? And Thursday you get shorted. You get shorted in here a little bit, so that'll probably even this out because they'll have a little more time on Thursday. Um, now. <laughs> What they're going to teach you in this last section is when you divide by a decimal. And so far this year in here, we haven't done that. You may have done it in other classes you've had before, but we've not done it in here. And, and I want to show you how it works. All you do, here's the rule. You move this decimal in the divisor. You remember which one's the divisor? You with the girls? You move it over all the way to the right. So this will become four. How many places did I have to move it? One. So I move this one the same number of places. One. Don't move it all the way to the right. This one you move all the way to the right. This one you move it as many places as this one did. So I move this over one place, and that means I move this over one place. You see my point? Now you just divide it like you've always divided it. That's 4 into 13.6. See, you can do that. Yeah. Once you, once you get the decimal out of this thing. So to get the decimal out of the divisor, move it all the way to the right. And then move these move it over the, in the dividend the same number of places, the same number of places, the same number of places, the same number of places. Not all the way to the right under the division sign. Same number of places. So here we go. 0 0.6 into 5.16. First step. Yeah, move this all the way to the right. How many places was that? Yeah, very good. So it goes right here. And it goes right here, and now you just divide it like you always have. If you want to rewrite it so it looks less messy, I don't care, but you don't have to. If you if you're careful, you can just divide it like that. But six goes into fifty-one. <laughs> you remember? Nine. Nine times six is fifty-four. So it's eight. Eight. Eight times six is forty-eight. Subtract. Oh, I forgot to put the decimal thing. Yep. There you go. Eight point six. That's all there is to it. So over here, look at this. You got point zero nine divided into zero point one four four. Go all the way to the right. One two. One two. One four four point. Do I see it? I move this two places, so I got to move this two places. I move this two places because that took it all the way to the right. Places, but I don't take this all the way to the right. I move it two places, just like I did this one. Nine goes to 14 one time. Nine goes to 54. How many times? Thank you. Six times. Evenly. See how it works? Yeah, that's it.
Okay. We'll stop right there for today. Now, we pretty well covered everything we're going to cover here before the next test. The next test will be the 8th. This is Tuesday. So we got Thursday and then next Tuesday to get ready for the test on the next Thursday. You with me? Got it? Clear? This would be, what will this be? Test number 8? 9. It'll be number 9, won't it? No, you just had 8, didn't you? Okay. All right. Any questions about anything? Your new baby? Your mom? Okay. But but they're both okay. It's just a lot of Yeah, can't can't sleep well and everything and tired and worn out. Yeah, it's really rough. Okay, we'll pray for them. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Ready to pray? Lord, thank you so much for all your blessings. You're so good to us. Thank you for giving us this day. Thank you for the way these kids worked hard today to learn their math. And Lord, uh, uh, what's your mom's name? Mm -hmm. Ashley. And what's the baby's name? Camley. Cam Cambry. Ashley and Cambry. Okay, Lord, I want to lift Ashley and Cambry to you and pray you'd bless them and, and help them get to rest. Lord, I pray you'd help little Cambry to be able to learn to sleep more and get to rest and help the mom, help Ashley to get the rest she needs. Lord, they just need a lot of grace right now. I know it's really difficult with a new baby in the home, so bless this family. Thank you so much for the prayer request. Lord, we pray that you'd help us to walk with you the rest of this day. Help us to bless you and others. Help us to be encouragers and good listeners. And uh, just fill us with your spirit. And we want you to get glory through us in Jesus' name. Amen.